The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper Dramatized in four parts by David Calcutt Episode 1 The Waking The Dark The Dark is Rising The Walker is abroad and the Rider is right and the horn will sound and the hunter will wake and the last of the circle has come to claim his own he is woken he is here outside this chamber on the hillside and there he sees something wonderful two great carved wooden doors standing in air he gazes at them like a child in a dream, so young, and understanding so little. Then let his understanding begin, my lady. Yes, it is time. Let him enter. Come forward. Enter the chamber. There is nothing to fear. Come, step into the circle. Step into the light. We have been waiting for you for a long time. Waiting for me? I... Who are you? My name is Merriman Lion, and this is... the lady. Come closer, Will Stanton. Sit down by me. It is a strange waking you've had today, this midwinter's day. A strange world you have woken into on your birthday. A world beyond worlds, and of wonders beyond imagining. Tomorrow will be beyond imagining. That's what she said to me yesterday. Farmer Dawson. And she spoke truly. Yet it is your world. Your inheritance. Lady, will you tell me how I came here. That you can tell yourself. Yes. Tell us all that has happened to you since yesterday. Yesterday? The day before my birthday. It seems so long ago now, like... Close your eyes. Use your powers. My powers? The powers that are waking in you. Use them. Bring the past into your mind and make it real. It's evening. Midwinter's Eve. Our kitchen at home. Mum's getting tea ready. Gwen is helping her. The others are supposed to be helping too, but Paul's at the table reading and Mary's listening to the radio. And I'm looking out of the window and making a wish. Will, don't forget the hay for the rabbits. I won't. I'm just going. Can you turn that off? I'm listening to it. And I'm trying to read. You're supposed to be setting the table. You could at least put the top 20 on. Have you finished those onions, Gwenny? Oh, just about. You've got no soul. That's your trouble. I'd rather have some earplugs. Before it gets dark, Will. Huh? He's daydreaming again. Wake up, Willie boy. He's wishing, aren't you, Will? Wishing for snow on his birthday. He always does. You might be in luck this year. Paul, set the table. Here it comes. This is the best bit now. Oh, it is a bit loud, Mary. It's got to be loud. Right, I'm off now. Can't turn the back, isn't it? I suppose so. Hang on, Will. I'm coming with you. What about the table? I can't stand this row. I'll do it when I get back. It'll be too late. I haven't done anything. Somebody has. Was it you, Will? Of course not. Well, look, you walked in front of the radio and it, and it went all wonkier. I can't find the station. See, Will, wishes do come true. <laughs> come on, let's get out of this madhouse. Mary, turn that noise off. There's too many of us. That's the trouble. The house is just too small. Now, we're walking along the lane. Me pushing the handcart on our way to Dawson's farm. We come to the wood and 
as we approach it, I begin to feel uneasy, as if there's something there waiting for me. It's silly, I tell myself, but I edge away from it. I keep to the other side of the lane. The light's starting to fade. Have you seen those rooks up there? What about them? Look at them, circling round and round. Something spooked them. Probably an owl. The noise they're making. That's what gets to me, the noise. It's never quiet. Always somebody. Paul. Now what? There's a man watching us. What man? In the trees. You see? Oh, yes. Looks like a tramp. He's looking right at us. Why is he staring at us like that? It's just some old tramp. Nothing to get so jumpy about. He's gone. That's what must have spooked the rooks. Him. Probably. By the looks of him, they couldn't stand the smell. <laughs> we leave the road, drag the cart across the track into Martha Dawson's farm. And she's there, looking towards us, as if she's waiting for us, as if she knew we were coming. Those rocks seem to be kicking up a bit of a fuss. There's a tramp in the wood. A tramp? Will spotted him. The walker. Nasty weather for walking. Yes, it's bad. You've come for your hay, I expect. It's in the barn, all ready for you. We'll go and fetch it then. Coming, Will. Yeah. You stay here, Will. I want you to pick something up for your mother. I'll get it then. See you in a minute. So, the walker is abroad, is he? Yes, he would be. You mean that tramp? The walker is abroad. And this night will be bad. And tomorrow will be beyond imagining. Evening, Will. Oh, hello, Maggie. Your brother with you, is he? Uh... I've seen him come. Where is he? In the barn? Well, yes. Why don't you go and say hello to him? I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Oh, he wouldn't. I might, though. I just might. Do you want something, Maggie? Uh, I just brought out that jar of mincemeat for Mrs. Stanton. Here you are, Will. Best mincemeat that is, isn't it, Mrs. Dawson? Thank you, Maggie. Off you go, then. I'm sure you've got some work to do. There's always work to do. See, Will. Tell Paul I says hello. I haven't got time to take myself this evening. Oh, uh, thank you for the mincemeat. You have a birthday tomorrow, don't you, Will? Yes. I have something for you. Here. Thanks. Uh, what is it? Let's call it a keepsake for now, shall we? A flat circle, made of iron, quartered by a cross. She hands it to me, presses it into my palm. It's cold. Put it in your pocket. When you get back home, loop it through your belt and keep it there. And the less you say about it, the better. You'll need it after the snow comes. We leave the farm. Go back down the lane towards the wood. And all the time, there's a feeling growing in me that something is happening. Behind all the ordinary things. It's something I can't quite see that's trying to break through. Look. It's him again. That tramp. The walker. He's right in our path. Like he's waiting for us. No. It's me. What does he want? Let's turn back. No, we can't. Come on. We'll ask him what he's up to. Suddenly, out of the sky, half a dozen rooks come swooping down, diving and darting. He throws up his arms, trying to beat them off, and comes stumbling past us along the lane, out onto the tracks toward the village. And he's gone. And the rooks settle back into the treetops. Did you see that? Did you see it? Yes! They attacked him. Those rooks, they came down and attacked him. I know. But birds don't do things like that. They don't attack people. I don't believe it. And what people do not wish to believe, they dismiss from their minds. And this is true of your brother, isn't it, Will? In the short space of time it takes you to return home, he has completely forgotten the incident took place. Yes. 
That's right. So you settle down to your evening meal. There's your mother serving up the potatoes and your eldest sister, Gwenny, cutting the bread and the twins, Mary and Paul, bickering as always. And you, quieter than usual, your eyes gazing off into some distant space. How do you know all this? It's as if you can see it. I can. The images in your mind are in mine also. You mean like telepathy? It is part of our power, Will, the gift that binds us together, all of our kind. Our kind? What do you mean? All will be made clear in time. For the moment, go on. <sighs> the door opens and the, my father comes in. He's late and he's soaking wet. Dad, what's happened to you? Where have you been? Oh, shut the door, Dad. It's freezing. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. Had to drive over to Beaconsfield. You look like you've fallen in the duck pond. Yeah, feels like it. Have you seen it out there? It's a regular blizzard. What? Oh, great. Look, <laughs> happy birthday, Will. You've got your wish. 14 tomorrow and it's snowing. Yeah. The dark heard you and gave you your wish. The dark? The thing you were born to fight against. The thing that would destroy you if it could because it fears you. And last night, the eve of your waking, it gathered its forces against you because it knew that with today's dawning you would wake into your inheritance and become its sworn enemy. With the coming of the dark, in the dark, with freezing snow and black wings pressing down upon you, a suffocating, formless weight of terror. Yes. In my sleep I heard it. I thought it was a dream, a nightmare. And then I knew it wasn't. But it was real. No. No. early morning, the sun's starting to rise, and everything's changed. The world I know has gone. No roofs. No fields. No walls. No fences. Only trees. A great forest covered in snow and stretching out as far as the eye can see. And the house is so still. Mom! Dad! Wake up! Paul! Mary! Gwenny! Wake up! But they don't wake. No. It's as if they're... frozen in time. So you dress and leave the house and go out. You walk a few steps into the trees and then you turn back. And the house has gone. So I go on. Following a narrow track through the forest. There's no sound or movement anywhere. The snow sparkles and glistens, and everything's so clear and clean and fresh and new. As if I'm walking through the first morning of the world. In a way, you are. This morning has been waiting for you to wake into it since the day you were born, and for centuries before that. I follow the track. I know what it is now. It's Huntercombe Lane, the lane that leads down to the village. Or did. There's no village here now. Only a clearing in the forest and a few small stone buildings. Pigs are rooting, smoke rising, the sound of hammer striking an anvil. And there, standing beside one of the buildings, a woman. She's looking at me, and even though her dress is strange, there's something familiar about her. It's Martha Dawson. Good morning, Will, and happy birthday. You must be hungry. I am. Here, eat this bread. Thank you. Do you have the gift I gave you? It's, it's looped in my belt. Let me see. Is it warm to the touch? Yes. Good. Let's hope it remains so. You'll need it today when you find the walker. 
It will be a sign for him. The walker? Yes. I know I have to find him, but I don't know why. You're new awake, Will, and you must learn it for yourself. Find the walker and the rest will follow. But be wary. The rider is abroad also. The rider? If the sign grows cold, you'll know he's near. Good luck now. And welcome. I leave her and go on along the track. Further on, I turn a bend and the land sweeps down towards the Thames. The sunlight flashes from the water, dazzling my eyes for a moment, so I blink and look away. And that's when I see him. You! What are you doing here? He's standing, half hidden among the trees and bushes, the same ragged clothes, the same dark, sunken face. The tramp from the day before. The walker. What do you want with me? Eh? You are the walker. What if I am? Hmm? What's it to you? I've been looking for you. Hey. I had to find you, but I don't know why. Find me? Is it you? Nah. You got me the one. Trying to trick me, that's all. Trick a poor old man. Make him think the time's come. I, I don't know what you mean. Now keep away from me. You're out with him, aren't you? You're out with the rider. Look, I'm just trying to understand what's happening. Where's the village? Where's my home? There ain't no home. Ain't no village, not yet. Uh, Won't be for 500 years. <sighs> you could be the one. You got the look. Newly woke, maybe. Well, if you are, if it is you, you'll be carrying the first sign. Sign the old one give you. Come on, show us, boy. Huh? Show the old walker the sign. The sign? You mean this? Yes, boy. That is just what he means. <laughs> the rider! I turn, and there's a man there. Out of nowhere, a man on a black horse. My fingers close round the iron circle, and it bites icy cold into my flesh. Yes, old man, the rider is here. So there's no need for you to remain, is there? You are not needed. Go! I am, but I... I... Be gone! <laughs> no, wait! <laughs> you won't return. Not at your calling. You're a fool boy to put your trust in such as them. What do you want? I want nothing. It's you that wants, isn't it? You want to go home, back to your family. I can take you there. Come. Climb up onto my horse. Take my hand. Why don't you just tell me how to get there? It's easier to ride. I'd rather walk. Don't you want to go home? Your mother and father, your sisters and brother, they're worried. They can't find you. Take my hand. I don't think I should. Oh, all this is so strange, isn't it? So bewildering. Poor boy. It's too much for you. You weren't meant for this. Come with me and I'll take you to where you belong. Back to your own world. Take my hand. I'm not supposed to... Do as I say, boy. I am the rider and you are nothing. Obey me. Take my hand. No. I won't. You dare to oppose me, boy? Do you know what I am? Do you think you have the strength to withstand my power? I have this. I have the side. One will not help you. Not alone. Not yet. <laughs> the rider and the horse rear above me. The earth twists beneath my feet. And I'm falling into driving hooves and hot breath and flying mane. And there's a beating of wings, and the world's gone black. And out of the blackness, a voice cries. And I open my eyes, 
and I'm at the foot of a hill. And on the brow of the hill, there are two carved wooden doors standing in air. And you pass through the doors and enter here. The place of sanctuary which is of no time and all times and where the power of the dark holds no sway. But where is here? I've told you everything, but I still don't really understand. You understand more than you know. The rider, for example, I think you understand about him. You felt his power. It was pulling at me. Hmm. Pulling me towards the dark. But you fought him. You resisted. For you, too, have a power. A power that has woken in you today and will grow ever stronger. You are one of the old ones. The first to be born for 500 years and the last. And you are bound as we are all bound in the ancient conflict between the light and the dark. Your purpose and quest is to find and guard the six signs of the light. The first hangs at your belt, but to find the others will not be so easy. The dark knows you are here and will seek to prevent you. For when all six are found and joined, you will have brought to life one of four great weapons that will be used to vanquish the power of the dark, which is even now reaching out all over this world. Four weapons in all. The grail, the signs, the harp and the sword. The first, the grail, has already been discovered. By other children. But only when all four are secured will the light be certain of victory. And the harp and the sword cannot be achieved without the signs. The dark knows this and will do all it can to stop you from finding them. Listen. That's Key. That's my dog. No. It is. I know his voice. Where is he? Sounds like he's in trouble. That is no dog. He's outside. Don't open that door. The dark is out there. Will? Will? Come and help me. My mother. Please, Will, I need you. The voice you hear is not your mother's. It is the voice of the dark. I've got to go to her. Don't open that door. If you saw what truly lies out there, it would be the last thing you would ever see. It is gone, and the danger is past. Return now to your own time. Seek the walker there. He carries the second sign. When it is in your hands, I will come again. Mum, Dad, wake up! Paul, Mary, Gwynny, wake up! Everyone, wake all up! Right, it's all right, no need to shout. What? Falling out like that. What do you want to wake us so early for? I didn't. I mean, it might be your birthday, but it's still a holiday. Don't be so mean, you two. All together now. After oh. three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Hello, Dad. How's the second-hand business? Mary! Will, I didn't know you two were coming into town. Yeah, we're Christmas shopping. You've left it a bit late. It's the best time to do it. The shops aren't so crowded. Mind if I have a look around her? Oh, go ahead. Okay. There's some new stuff in those boxes over there. We came in to see if you were finishing early today. We thought you might be able to give us a lift home. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I've got to wait for a delivery. On Christmas Eve? It's your mother's present. I was in Beaconsfield the other day. There's a man I deal with over there, Mr. Mitothin. He showed me the most wonderful bracelet. Perfect for your mother, I thought. But he said he needed to do some work on it. There were two jewels needed replacing, but he said he'd get it to me today. So it could come any time? Yes. So if we call back in about an hour and yeah. if it's arrived... Hang on. Mary, you seen this? What is Hello. it? I don't know, some kind of hunting horn. Oh. Let's see. It's made of wood. Looks really old. Oh, well, sorry. Wonder if I can get a note out of it. 
Nothing. It's weird. Why'd you say that? I don't know. All those carvings on it. Well, I like it. Oh, it looks like you might get your lift home after all. That was Mr. Mitothin. He won't be able to get the bracelet over to me today. But he said he'd bring it round to the house in the morning. Christmas morning. Great. So we'll just go and finish our shopping and call back in about an hour? I've finished mine. Don't fancy hanging around. I think I'll take the bus back. Ah, oh, it's up to you. Right, then. Where'd you get this, Dad? I don't know. Where did you find it? It was at the bottom of one of these boxes. Will's taken a fancy to it, even though he can't play it. I bet I could with some practice. <sighs> Oh, yeah. That's fabulous, Will. Really fabulous. The light's already fading, and when I come to Huntercombe Lane, I suddenly decide to take a shortcut through the wood. Tramp's Alley, we call the track. We used to be scared of it when we were children. And now, as I walk along it and go deeper into the wood, that old fear comes back to me again. What's that? Hello? Is somebody there? Who is it? Those boots, too, boy. Walker! <laughs> That's who it is, boy. It's the Walker. Let go of me! Right. <laughs> no tricks now, boy. You've got something for me. Have I now? Is that right? You carry the second sign. Give it to me. I have the first sign already. Look. You see it? Oh, yes. The sign of iron. And here... The sign of bronze. Give it to me, Walker. So heavy it is. And I've been carrying it so long. Weighing me down. Wearing me out. All these years hiding, waiting for the one who'll take it from me. And now I'm here. Is it you? If only I knew if, if I put it in the wrong hands, the things they do to me. Are you the right one, boy? Yes. Oh, you a trick. Huh? Sent to trap me, yes. That's what you are, the trick of the dark. Walker, you know who I am. The last of the old ones has come. And it's time. The moment for giving the sign has come. I command you. Oh, yes. Yes, at last. The time has come. Here, take it. Take it from me. I place it in your hands. Hello, Will Stanton. <laughs> Maggie. On your way home, are you? Well, yes. And this old tramp bothering you, is he? I've seen him hanging around the farm. Up to no good, I bet. You best be going. You stay where you are! Oh. What have you done to him? And you, Will Stanton. Don't you move, neither. <laughs> you feel that cold? <laughs> feel that cold running through your blood, freezing your flesh? That's the touch of the dark. It grips you and holds you fast. So I'll just take this from you and this that you have on your belt and you can watch and do nothing and know that you failed and the dark has won. <laughs> In episode one of The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper, dramatized by David Calcutt, Will was James Wormsley and Merriman Ronald Pickup. The rider was Struan Roger, the lady Carolyn Backhouse, the walker Geoffrey Banks, and Will's family Richard Derrington, Susan Jeffrey, Leo Conville, Susanna Tresillian, and Hilary Attenborough. Other parts were played by Catherine Hunt and Tina Gray, and the music was composed by Martin Alcock. The Dark is Rising is an Armada production directed by Nigel Bryant. The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper Dramatised in four parts by David Calcutt Episode 2 The Learning 
On the morning of his 14th birthday, Will Stanton has discovered that he is an old one, one of the guardians of the light, engaged in an age-old struggle against the rising power of the dark. His purpose is to seek and secure the six signs of the light, and in this quest he is guided by myself, Merriman Lyon. The first sign he already has. The second is carried by a strange old man known as the Walker. And now, on his way home through a wood on Christmas Eve, he meets the Walker and commands the sign from him. Yes, at last, the time has come. Take it from me. I place it in your hands. Hello, Will Stanton. <laughs> Maggie, best be going. You stay where you are. Oh. What have you done to him? And you, Will Stanton. Don't you move, neither. <laughs> you feel that cold, do you? <laughs> feel that cold running through your blood, freezing your flesh. That's the touch of the dark. It grips you and holds you fast. So I'll just take this <laughs> from you and this that you have on your belt. You can watch and do nothing and know that you failed and the dark has won. <laughs> no, you are wrong. It is you who have failed as those of the dark are always doomed to fail. <laughs> you dare to touch the signs of the lights? Loose them. Do you not feel how they burn into your flesh? Ah! Please, have mercy! And what do you know of mercy? Hmm? Let the lights reveal you for what you are. Fly! Back to your master! Tell him that the signs are beyond his reach. The power of the light is awake and alive again. That was Maggie Barnes, Farmer Dawson's dairymaid. I've known her all my life. As you have known Martha Dawson, yet only a few days ago you discovered that she was like you and me, one of the circle. I used to joke with my brother about Maggie fancying him, and all this time she was... She was one of the dark. Does it make you sad? It's like everything I knew has changed. It seems like I can't trust anybody. You do best not to, unless you're certain of them. And even then, expect nothing and fear nothing. It was your fear of her that gave the witch girl power over you. But for that, you could have defeated her as easily as I did. It was lucky you came. Luck had nothing to do with it. There's no chance in our world, and all that happens, happens by design. Though sometimes the true purpose of that design is hidden even from me. The sign of iron, and now the sign of bronze. Where will we find the next? You are the sign seeker. The quest is yours. I'm simply here to guide and protect you. What about him, the walker? His task is over. It's time to release him. Merriman steps through the snow to where the walker stands, frozen by Maggie's spell, and, very gently, reaches out and touches him. Walker! <coughs> it, it's all right, old friend. Dangerous past. What am I doing? I didn't bring her. I know that. Why should you? I did as you asked. I found him. I gave him the sign, didn't I, boy? Yes. And you have done well, and now your burden is lifted from you, and your long journey is over. Gone. Yes, it's gone. It's all over. <laughs> What's the matter with him? He has been waiting for you to be born and to command the sign from him for time past your imagining. It has worked hard on him. Walker. I know, my lord. Don't. There is no need to fear me. You know that. 
I have come to bring you rest, peace. And once more, he touches the walker, gently, and he's gone. Now he's in a place where he can rest for a while. He served the light a long time. As for you, your quest has only begun, and it's time I explained a little more. We walk along the track through the wood and out onto Huntercombe Lane. The snow's falling steadily, and our tracks are deep. And as we walk, Merriman tells me more about what happened to me when I woke on my birthday and the strange world in which I'd found myself. Not such a strange world. It was your own. This very place, but as it was some 500 years ago. But why was I taken there? All times coexist, Will. What happens in one affects another. And we of the circle are loosely planted in time. It was to show you this that you were taken there on your waking. And also that you might see with clear eyes the face of your enemy. The rider. Hmm. I'll never forget his face, his eyes. It is a face you will see again before your quest is done. What? He's here? He is in all places. Even in that place inside the hill where I first met you and the lady? No, not there. That is her refuge and sanctuary, a place beyond time and beyond the reach of the dark. But a day will come when she will step forth and return to this world and be honored again. And I trust that that day will not be long in coming. But who is she? You will discover that in time. Well, well. Oh, there's your sister. You'd better go to her. But what happens next? The third sign. Well. Take things as they come. Where have you been? Go now. We'll meet again soon. Marion's dad got back ages ago. What have you been up to? Nothing. I just took a slow walk back. You took it slow, all right. Tea's on the table, and it's carol singing tonight. I walk towards Gwenny, then turn to say goodbye to Merriman. But he's not there. And where we walked, the only tracks in the snow are mine. There's just the three of you going to exercise your tonsils then, is there? It looks like it. Where are my wellies? I don't know where your wellies are. Why not you this year, Gwenny? Well, I've got things to do. Such as? Well, I need to wash my hair for a start. And write another long and passionate letter to what's his name? His name's Steve. Mum, have you seen my wellies? No, Will. They should be in the usual place. Well, they're not. Try looking under the stairs, then. Who's Steve, Gwenny? Her boyfriend at university. I didn't know you had a boyfriend. He must be keen on her. She's had three letters from him since she came home. Dear Gwenny, how I miss you, my love. How my heart aches when I think of the hours we spent lying together. <laughs> Our bodies locked in passionate embrace. Oh, you can mock. At least I've got a boyfriend. I don't see many girls knocking at your door. There's one or two. He means Maggie Barnes. Shut up, Mary. Got well them? Yes. Alice, did you know Gwenny had a boyfriend? Yes. Maggie Barnes. Does she still fancy him? Worse than ever. I'd have thought a good-looking lad like you could have done better than her. I don't fancy her. There's no need to be embarrassed, Paul. Admit the truth. You're in love with Maggie Barnes. Just shut up, will you? I wouldn't care if I never saw Maggie Barnes again. We well, won't. What? Uh... You won't see her again. She's... she's had to leave. Mrs. Dawson told me just... just the other day when we fetched the hay for the rabbit. And where's she going? Um... I don't know. She... she didn't say. It's because she's heartbroken over Paul. She's gone away to try to forget him. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> so we set out, carol singing. We've done this every year since I can remember, and I've always looked forward to it. But this year... It's different. This Christmas Eve, everything's different. The snow falls heavy and cold. Too cold somehow. The flakes whipped by the wind and lashing our faces like creatures flying out of the dark. And the dark itself, it's heavy, solid. A living force filled with threat. And only I am aware of it. Paul and Mary are laughing and chatting as we trudge up the hill towards our last destination, Miss Greythorn's manor house, where
where I know that something's waiting for me. Right. What should we start with? We've also got a song for Miss Greythorn, isn't it? Okay. Um. Mm, after four. Here we come, a wassailing among the leaves so green. And we sing the old song, and the door opens, and light floods out into the dark. And standing tall and smiling in the light is Miss Greythorn's butler. But it's not her usual butler. It's Merriman. Excellent, most enchanting. Don't keep them waiting out there in the cold, Merriman. Bring them in. Yes, please, my young friends, do step inside. Thank you. Mm. It is cold out there. Freezing. <laughs> Come through in here where it's warm. Merriman, mm. what do you think here? Go and join your brother and sister. Miss Greythorn does not like to be kept waiting. Ah, there you are, Will. Come closer. Stand with your brother and sister by the fire. Thank you, Miss Greythorn. And let me introduce my new butler. This is Merriman. Bates has had to leave me recently due to an um, indisposition. I found Merriman at a moment's notice. Now... And the candles are lit, the holly is hanging, and the fire is blazing in the grate. Let nothing delay us more. Do you have something you wish to sing? Well... I seem to recall a particularly moving rendition of the Coventry Carol you gave at this time last year. Most poignant. <clears throat> Perhaps we could have that again. Well, you're on your own there, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The candles flicker, the fire burns bright. Shadows fill the room as Mary sings. And then... There's a kind of... jump. As if the whole room's suddenly been turned inside out. And time stops. Paul and Mary stand frozen, mouths open. But Miss Greythorn rises from her chair and comes towards me. Welcome, Will Stanton. Welcome to the circle. I have long awaited this moment, the moment of your learning. Take my hand. Merriman, will you lead us? Of course, ma'am. We follow Merriman out of the room, down a long passage until we come to a door and Miss Greythorn leads me through into a great room it's lit by a single large candle and by its light I can see that every wall from floor to ceiling is filled with books the library once it was the pride of the manor some of the books here were old very old indeed were in your time this library and the books it contains no longer exists. It was burned down a century ago. One hundred years ago this very night. Go to that bookcase in front of you. It is the oldest book in the world and the only one of its kind. It is the book of knowing in which were written long ago the secrets of the light. And when you have read it, you will know and understand your place as an old one. Take it down, Will. I'm almost afraid to touch it. So you should be. Take it down. Bring it over to the table. And now... Will Stanton, open the book and tell me what you see. Nothing. It's empty. Look closer, Will. Look not with the eyes of a boy, but with the eyes of an old one whose sight pierces the shadowy fabric of this world and sees into the shining hearts of the true world beyond. I look again at the blank page, and now it seems to be moving under my gaze. 
becoming deeper, an expanse of whiteness reaching out into vast distances, and out of that distance, dark specks, like a flock of birds approaching. But they're not birds, they're words, and they speak themselves to me, and they're all around me. I have journeyed as an eagle through soaring skies. I am a wind at the world's edge. I have traveled as a salmon through deep waters. I am a wave on the sea's face. I'm standing alone on a cliff top above the sea. Before me, a circle of stones. There's an oak tree growing at the center of the circle. A lady steps from behind the tree, walks out of the stones towards me. In one hand, she holds a golden cup. In the other, a spear, dripping with blood. And her forehead is marked with a circle, quartered by a cross. The patterns of the stars have been made known to me, and every spell of the sun and moon. I know the mysteries of all the planets. I have danced upon the comet's tail. But now, the full moon breaks through the clouds, and its light shines full on the stones and the tree. Then, there's a crash overhead. Lightning stabs down, strikes the tree, and it bursts into flame. And the stones become living figures, shining in the mingled light of fire and moon. And I join with them as the flame leaps up and cuts through the darkness and blazes like a beacon out into the sky, burning forever across the whole of time. Who but I can foretell the ages of the world? Who but I know the mysteries of all making? All things are known to me from end to beginning. I shall be until the day of doom on the face of this earth. Then the light shrinks to a single yellow flame. And I'm back in the library, looking down at the book. And it's burning. Now the mysteries of the old ones have been opened to your will and their power lies sleeping in every thread and fibre of your being. So the book of grammary has fulfilled its purpose and is needed no more in this world. Join hands with us, Will. And don't be afraid of what happens next. The book goes on burning until there's nothing left of it. But the flames don't go out. They spread across the table, down onto the floor, over the walls and the ceiling until the whole room's ablaze. Remember what I told you. One hundred years ago this very night, the library was destroyed in a fire. But it is a fire of making as well as destroying and it cannot harm you. Then a great beam breaks loose from the ceiling and crashes onto the floor in a shower of sparks. Look, well, the oak you saw in the standing stones upon the hill, the oak that was struck down by lightning, there, from its great trunk, a beam was fashioned and that beam was placed in the ceiling of the house. And here it has lain across the centuries, guarding its secret, the secret hidden in the heart of the oak. Now, what do you see? A circle. A burning circle. Reach into the flame, sign seeker, and take what is yours. I push my fingers into the heart of the flame, grasp the blazing circle, place it in my palm. And there it lies, cooling. A plain wooden circle, quartered by a cross. The third sign. A sign of wood. Merriman. Most enchanting. Yeah. Now, would you all like a little Christmas punch? Yes, please. That's very kind of you. You'll find it very warming. Just the thing to sustain you against this dreadful cold. And it is growing even colder, I think. Oh, much colder. She's right. 
When we leave to go home, the snow's heavier, the wind's stronger, and the bare trees howl around us in the darkness. And in my pocket, even the warmth of the wooden circle, the third sign beneath my fingers, isn't enough to keep out the driving cold. Mince pie, anybody? Fresh from the oven? Oh, I'll have one. I'll have two. You had six at the manor. That looks out now. <sighs> All manners. Those two words just don't go together. Will? Will? What? Mince pie? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. I'll have this. No, you won't. I will. Thanks. Ah, delicious as usual. Are you all right, Will? Yes. You've been a bit quiet lately. I'm fine. I hope you're not coming down with anything. No, really, I'm all right. I'm just a bit tired, that's all. He's half asleep. Get up, Will. None of us can feel the fire with you lying in front of it. Move yourself. All right, all right. You ought to be getting off to bed, really. It is <sighs> nearly half past eleven. What are those, Will? Eh? Hey? Those things on your belt, like buckles. Oh, they're, um, decorations. I made them at school. I didn't know you took an interest in that kind of thing. Let's have a look at them. No! Ow! Mary, what's what the matter? It burnt me! That buckle thing, I, I touched it and it burnt me. I said you were lying too near the fire. Sorry, Mary, you are right. She'll survive. It's nothing. It just came as a bit of a shock, that's all. I think I will go to bed. I'm dead beat. Night. Sometime between dark and dawn. And I dream. And in my dream, the lady calls me. When the dark comes rising, six shall turn it back. Three from the circle, three from the track. Wood, bronze, iron, water, fire, stone. Five will return and one go alone. And I'm standing in a clearing in the middle of a wood. It's warm, midsummer, and the birds are singing. And she stands before me, dressed in robes of yellow and green. You have done well, sign seeker. Iron and bronze and wood you have, but the other three are still for the finding. You will not fail us. No, lady. Look about you. See the world as it was, the world as it will be, the green world. I shall return, and it shall return with me. The lady shall return, but only if you do not fail. I promise you, I shall not fail. Follow the signs, seek them out. For the dark is rising, growing to power at the turning of the year. Beware the snow and the coming of the cold, for twelfth night comes, and the dark, the dark is rising. Lady, where are you? Lady! She's gone, boy. Gone, and she won't come back. And he's there, on his horse above me, the rider. Forget her, forget all of them. They are nothing. Their time is past. We are everything, and our time is come. He turns his horse, breaks through the trees, and I see a great open space where a fire burns, and there are figures dancing around the fire. And in the firelight, I can see their faces. Come and join us, Will! <laughs> Come and join our dance! We'll give you everything! No, Walker. They lie. The dark always lies. Cool. You're a fool, boy. Come and join us. Join us. Dance with us. Dance with us forever. The dark, the dark is rising. The dark, the dark is rising. The dark, the dark is rising. The dark, the dark is dark. Oh, a transistor radio! Oh, fantastic! Thanks, Mum. Thanks, Dad. That's just what I wanted. Your turn now, Gwenny. 
Last but not least, <laughs> off you go. All right. Christmas morning. The great present unwrapping oh. ritual. Well, All of us good. gathered round the tree, wow. each taking it in turns, youngest to oldest. So I've opened mine. And now I'm watching the others open theirs. And wishing I could enjoy it like I used to. Wishing just for these few minutes I could forget everything and just be me. Oh, Ordinary Will Stanton again. Just right, thanks. And happy Christmas. But I remember the dream I had the night before. And I know that I can't. Oh, right then. Has everyone done? So, how about we clear up all this uh, mess? Hang on. There's one more present. Will? Yeah. Go and look round the back of the tree. <laughs> What's all this? Go and see. How come he gets an extra present? Because he's just had his 14th birthday. <laughs> That's no reason. I've just made it one. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? I bet I know. Well, don't keep us all in suspense, Will. Open it. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> I thought so. It's that trumpet from Dad's shop. Not a trumpet, a hunting horn. You seemed to take such a fancy to it yesterday. I thought I'd let you have it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dad. That was the door. I know. Nobody ever calls on Christmas morning. Somebody is now. <laughs> Who on earth can it be? I think I know. Roger? Yeah, just a minute, Alice. All will soon be revealed. As Dad goes to let the visitor in, I look down at the hunting horn. Its smooth surface is cut with patterns and symbols. And I know that it's part of my quest. Because there, standing clear of all the other symbols, is a circle, quartered by a cross. I touch it gently with the tips of my fingers. And it's icy cold. This is Mr. Matothin, a business acquaintance of mine. How do you do, Mrs. Stanton? Compliments of the season to you. And to you, Mr. Um... Mitothin. Would you like a drink? And a mince pie, perhaps? No, thank you kindly. I shan't stay. Only long enough to fulfil my purpose. Uh, Roger, what is all this about? You'll find out in a moment. Mr. Mitothin, these are our children. There's Gwenny, our eldest, and Paul and Mary, their twins. Hi. Pleased to meet you. And this is Will, our youngest. Will, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. He comes towards me, smiling, and the air seems to grow dark about him. And suddenly, I see the image of a man on a black horse. The same red hair, the same cold blue eyes, here in my house, among my family. That's right, boy. The rider has come. He has crossed your threshold, entered your home, an invited guest. I am here, and there is nothing you can do. In episode two of The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper, dramatized by David Calcutt, Will was James Walmsley and Merriman Ronald Pickup. The rider was Struan Roger, the walker, Geoffrey Banks, Miss Graythorne, Mary Wimbush, and Will's family, Richard Derrington, Susan Jeffrey, Leo Conville, Susanna Tresillian, and Hilary Attenborough. Other parts were played by Carolyn Backhouse and Catherine Hunt, and the music was composed by Martin Alcock. The Dark is Rising is an Armada production, directed by Nigel Bryant. The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper Dramatised in four parts by David Calcutt Episode 3 The Betrayal Will Stanton has obtained the third of the six signs of light he has to find to overcome the powers of the dark. But as his strength and understanding grow, the Dark is ever more determined to prevent him from achieving his quest. And even at home on Christmas morning, he is not safe from them. This is Mr. Matothin, a business acquaintance of mine. How do you do, Mrs. Stanton? Compliments of the season to you. Would you like a drink? And a mince pie, perhaps? No, thank you kindly. I shan't stay. Only long enough to fulfil my purpose. <sighs> 
Mr. Matothin, these are our children. There's Gwenny, our mm -hmm. eldest, and Paul and Mary, they're twins. Hi. Pleased to meet you. And this is Will, our youngest. Will, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. He comes towards me, smiling, and the air seems to grow dark about him. And suddenly, I see the image of a man on a black horse. The same red hair, the same cold blue eyes, here in my house, among my family. That's right, boy. The rider has come. He has crossed your threshold, entered your home, an invited guest. I am here, and there is nothing you can do. Oh, no? I've seen the Book of Grammary, and I have the words of power. Words that would blast your family out beyond time if you use them here. You are a fool, old one. Do you think you can control me? I am not for your mastering. Not yet, perhaps. Nor ever will be. Hear what I come to tell you, boy. The dark is rising and nothing shall hinder us. Tell your masters we shall take from them these things of power and use them for our own. We shall break your circle before it can ever be joined. And with it, we shall break you. Oh, Roger, it's beautiful. I've never seen such a lovely bracelet. Your husband has good taste. That's it. Oh, it's wonderful. Are those real diamonds? Of course they are. Dad wouldn't get anything fake. <laughs> thank you again, Roger. And thank you, Mr. Mitothin, for, for bringing it over today. I think nothing of it, please. It's been a pleasure to meet you and your charming family. You must stay and have some. No, no, I've taken enough of your time. My purpose is fulfilled, so I'll be off and leave you to your breakfast. I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Toffin. No trouble, really. No trouble at all. I'll see you again. Uh, I've no doubt you will. Goodbye. And a happy Christmas to you all. <laughs> He's gone. I turn to look at Mum's bracelet. It really is beautiful. A delicate golden band set with three diamonds. I look at it more closely. Cut into the gold, there are delicate, curved lines, entwined and twisting about each other, almost seeming to move before my eyes, like creatures created to bring harm. And then, suddenly, I'm struck by something, and go to the door, open it, and look out. What are you doing, Will? I'll close the door, it's freezing. Mr. Matoffin, how did he get here? What are you talking about? My car, I suppose. I didn't hear the sound of any engines starting up. He must have done. He can't have got here any other way on Christmas Day. Probably left it down at Hunter Coombe Lane or something. Easier than driving up here in the snow. It was very nice of him to come out on Christmas morning. But I know he hasn't left his car in the lane. He didn't come by car at all. Because all the way along the path to the gate and in the track beyond, the snow lies smooth and there are no footprints. Well, look at those clouds. They're pitch black. We're in for another snowfall. Certainly looks like it. My feet are freezing, even in these boots. You didn't have to come for a walk, you know. I was quite happy to go alone. We always go for a walk on Boxing Day. At least there's two of us keeping up the family tradition. Yeah. The day after Christmas, the snow's still falling. The clouds low, heavy and dark. I'm beginning to wish we hadn't left the house. Out here, I feel exposed. I can sense danger nearby. Something waiting to strike. I think the others were right. It's not really a day for a walk. We can go back if you like. Let's just go up to the church. Then we'll turn back. I'll be ready for another turkey sandwich there. Yeah. Above the spire, I can see rooks circling, darting and diving. I ease my hand under my coat, touch the signs on my belt. Each of them is icy cold. I know now that the dark is near and we should turn back. But some force, stronger than reason, won't allow it and pushes me on. If only Merriman were here. If only there was someone who could help. Look, it's Mr. Dawson. Hello there, you two. What are you doing here? 
Just out for a stroll, you know, Mrs. Dawson. In this weather, you must be mad. I think we are, actually. Help me well. Yeah. It's not the kind of weather I'd choose to be out in, unless I had to. It's going to get worse as well. Maybe we should go back now, Gwenny. Not till I finish the church. I only want a quick look round. If that bad weather does come, at least we'll be sheltered. Oh, that doesn't sound a bad idea to me. Mind if I join you? Of course not. Best close the door behind us. That's more like it. Beautiful place, isn't it? It is. I've always loved coming here. Ever since I was a little girl. So quiet and still. It's centuries old. Saxon. You see that carving of the face up there on the wall? It's got vines coming out of its mouth. It's called the Green Man. And it goes back to the It's the dark that's coming upon us, you know, Will. Yes, I know that. It's closing in fast. We'll be hard-pressed to stand against it. It's my fault. I shouldn't have insisted on going out, but it was as if something was drawing me. It was. I can see that now. The dark. No, not the dark. At least I don't think so. Those rooks have been above the church for nearly an hour. There's something else here that draws them. Mrs Dawson! Will, look! What is it? Here, by the altar. There's a man. He's there, curled up in his rags like an animal crouched between the bench and the altar steps, as if hiding. The walker. Looks like a tramp. But he's asleep. He, he must have come in to take shelter, poor man. Well, what are we going to do? We can't leave him here. And maybe I should take him to my place. It's not far, and I can give him something warm to eat and drink. I'll just wake him. No! no. It, it, it's all right. No! Leave me! Oh, what do you want with me? Leave me alone! What's the matter with him? They're coming. You brought them. Thought I could hide. Keep still. Just leave me! I've done no harm. Let me alone. Oh, Will, stop no. him if I can. Get them away from me, those things. They burn. Get them away. No! The doors. What is it? That noise! It's the storm. I can't stand it. Look to your sister, Will. He's passing. Use your powers. Close her mind. It's my ears. It's too much for her. The dark will send her mad. I can't stand in my head. Be still. Make it stop, please. Make it stop. Be still. She's safe now. She hears and sees nothing. What about him? I don't know. His mind shut fast to me. There's nothing I can do for him. It's him the dark has come for. We must drive it off if we can. Perhaps if we speak the words of power. I know from my learning only fear can defeat me. I remain calm. Unbuckle my belt. Raise it high above my head. Then I walk forward, holding the three signs before me. I feel the power waking in me, running up through my arms like an electric current and out into the body of the church itself. The church jolts, jumps into life. The stones themselves wake. And they begin to sing. It's gone. The dark is gone. You drove it back. Not me. It was the signs. But it was you they worked through, Will. You, the sign seeker. And these are only three. When we have the six... <laughs> when you have the six... <laughs> Walker! Stay back from me, old one. Keep those things away from me. What's the matter with you? 
The dark came for you. We saved you from it. Save the poor old walker out of the goodness of your heart, was it? I know about the hearts of the old ones, cold and hard as stone they are. His mind's been hurt. Oh, yes, I've been hurt, all right, hurt bad. And who was it hurt me, eh? Who put the mark on me, sent the dark after me all these years? That's over now. No, it'll never be over. They will never let me rest, never. The dark's strong. You think you can just chase it off, eh? You think they'll let you get the six? Walker, stop this. Come to me now. Take my hand. No! You've got no command over me! Walker, come back! Leave him! We can't do anything for him unless he wishes it. Let him go and heal his wounds. His part in this is over. I'm not so sure about that. Shh! What is it? Listen. You hear it? Yes. The stones. Uh, over there. Look. Beneath the green man. In the wall, beneath the carved stone face, there's a light shining. A circle of light like a torch beam thrown out from the wall and every moment growing stronger. It's calling to you, Will. Quick, before the moment passes. I walk towards the wall where the light shines. A perfect circle. I reach my hand into it, touch the stone, and something breaks free, drops into my palm. And the light's gone. But the thing remains. A thin, flat circle of flint, quartered by a cross. The sign of stone. You've got the fourth sign. This is why you were brought here. The signs awoke, and they called, and the other answered. But it was the dark. It was because I used them to fight it that the signs woke. If it hadn't been for the dark, I wouldn't have found this. This is true. Huh? Merriman. And that truth touches the great mystery that lies at the heart of your quest and of everything. The forces of light and dark are not only opposed, they're also linked inextricably. And they move towards an end that even we cannot foretell. There is a higher power that moves us all, light and dark, for a purpose none can fully comprehend. All they can do is trust and have faith and serve that which we were ordained to serve. Let me see the fourth sign. Ah. Flint, Will. Grown into the hills 15 million years ago and waiting through all those ages for this moment when you would call it forth. You have done well. He has. He drove back the dark with the signs. The walker was here. I know. Leave him to me. You must look to those closer to you. What do you mean? Wake your sister from her sleep and go back home. You're needed there. She will remember nothing of this. I'm needed? Don't worry. All's well for the time being. But it's not only here that the dark has struck today. I'm all right now, really. No, you're not, Paul. It's only a few cuts and bruises. It's more than that, and you know it. Goodness knows, it could have been a lot worse. So you'll stay in bed and rest, just as Dr Armstrong told you to. Okay. It's when we get back oh, home no. that I understand Merriman's words. Paul's in bed, badly bruised and cut. His ankle swollen so that he can't walk, and his face deathly pale. I came out to look for you and Gwenny, not long after you left. I suddenly fancied a walk as well. I told him not to. I could see there was some bad weather coming. I walked right into it. it. It was terrible. I couldn't see a thing, so I turned round to come back home, and then... Then this horse came. A horse? Must have been one of Mrs Dawson's that broke loose. I don't know where it came from. Like, like out of nowhere. Out of the storm, right on top of me. It knocked me down. And then when I tried to get back up... It was frightened by the storm, poor thing. <laughs> I don't know about poor thing, Mary. I mean, when I think what it might have done. It was like it had gone crazy. And with the snow and the, and the wind and its hooves coming down at me, I tell you, I've never been so frightened. Mary, Will... Leave your brother alone to rest now. This horse. Will. What did it look like? I don't know. It was a horse and it was attacking me. All right now. Black it was. That's the only thing I remember about it. It was black.
heavy snow is again falling in the south and west of England and has brought many areas to a complete standstill. And with no immediate change expected, household restrictions on the use of electricity seem likely to be... We sit in the kitchen a few days later, huddled by the fire, listening to the announcer on the radio telling us what we already know. Meanwhile, telephone lines are down in many areas and severe storms have isolated many villages in the more remote parts of the southeast. So it goes on. Day after day with no sign of letting up. New Year comes and goes, and still the dark encloses us like an iron trap, tightening, waiting for the moment when it will spring shut. We're out of nearly everything. Flour, sugar, tinned milk... I know we're not supposed to leave our homes, except in an emergency. But as far as I'm concerned, this is an emergency. Looks like I'd better try and get out of the store, then. Well, if they've got anything left. Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, don't go on your own, though, Roger. Go on, Will. You're all right. I'll come. Good lad, Will. Goodness knows how long it'll take you to dig your way out. Yeah. The snow's still falling, thick and fast, and it's slow going. We left home at mid-morning. By the time we get to the store, it's well into the afternoon. I've got some flour you can have. Two bags, was it? Yes, please. Right. That only leaves me with three. Uh, what else was it? Milk. Oh, you'll be lucky. Cupboards bare, as they say. It's like the war all over again. Ah. Good afternoon. Good oh, afternoon, Mr Lyon. Uh, Mr Stanton, do you know Mr Lyon? Ah. From the manor. Miss Greythorn's new butler. Nice ah. to meet you. Likewise. Uh, good afternoon. Will, isn't it? Yes. Yes, Will and I are already acquainted. Oh? Uh, when we went carol singing. I see. I hope you haven't come to buy anything, Mr Lyon. I don't know why I bother staying out. And hardly anybody can get out of their house. And if they do make the effort, well, they won't find anything they want. Actually, that's the reason I've called. We've just heard over the radio that supplies of fuel and food are to be dropped at the manor grounds. Well, last, they've taken their time. And Miss Graythorn is inviting everyone who lives in the village to move up to the manor for the duration of the emergency. Well, it'll be a little crowded, well, that's of course. the best idea I've heard yet. Uh, it'll be a comfort to be around other folks again. Well, I'll go and get some blankets. It's bound to be cold up there. Uh, very decent of Miss Graythorn, but I don't think we'll be able to come. Dad, Paul's still not recovered, Will. He's not fit to travel and we can't very well leave him on his own, can we? The storm is expected to get much worse tonight, Mr Stanton. The manor will be a much safer place. Yes, all right. Perhaps you and your sisters can go, Will. But your mother and I will stay with Paul. There's just about enough for the three of us. Yes. Now, I'd better get round the village and tell everyone else. I'll come with you, if you want. It would be a help, if your father doesn't mind. No, no, of course not. When you've finished, you might as well go straight to the manor. I'll send Gwenny and Mary up. Is your brother well? He's okay. Mm. Getting better. It was you that saved him, wasn't it? Yes. I hate the dark. What it did to Paul. What it would do if it had the chance. I hate it. You mustn't hate, Will. That's what the dark wants you to do. Hate clouds the mind. And it's your mind, above all, that must remain cool and clear. It's your most powerful weapon and must remain unhampered by baser emotions. That's hard. I know. But you're an old one. And you have a responsibility to achieve your quest. And that is the only way in which the dark will be defeated. These past days, the dark has been gathering its strength. Tonight, it will launch another attack. It's most powerful so far. It will be a crucial moment. Whether it or we are successful is in the balance. That is why you must come to the manor. You will have the strength of the others to assist you. And the signs. They may not be enough. I have four. Hmm? With three, I drove it back from the church. But the dark is stronger now. As Twelfth Night approaches, its power increases, and it may have help from another. The Walker. The Walker? You found him? Yeah. A few days ago, half frozen in the snow. And I took him to the manor, poor creature. Dark has been working on him. His spirit is almost broken. I've tried to speak to him, but he won't hear me. Go to him, Will. I believe he has some affection for you. Try and bring him back into the light. 
for if he finally turns from us, he will betray us and call in the dark. Walker, what do you want with me? I've come to help you. And why should you want to do that, eh? Why should an old one want to help the walker? No. You've heard what you wanted? You're done with me, and I am done with you. You hate me. All of us. Why? You carried one of the signs. Yes, boy. You're the cause of it. For you, I carried it. Do you know how long, eh? Six hundred years? All that time alone? Outcast? I lost everything. All that I knew, all that I loved. Even my own name. Hawking. Oh. Ah, yes, that is your name. I remember if you do not, Hawking. Oh. Uh, Will, your sisters are here and others. They're gathered in the hall and the storm is coming. Yes, the storm is coming. The storm and the dark and you won't keep them out. Not for all your signs of power. Hawking, have you forgotten so much? You were my liegeman once, and there was love and trust between us. I haven't forgotten. I trusted you, and you betrayed me. No. You made me carry the sign. You were my lord, and I couldn't refuse. And at first I was happy to serve my master, but I didn't know. I didn't know what it would cost. And you didn't tell me. It was necessary. You changed me from a man into, into this. You took away my life, and you took my death from me. Merriman, the storm. Ah, I hear it. Yes, it's coming. The storm is coming. Hawking, every man has a choice. You must choose. Now it is not too late. Come, turn once more to the light. No. The dark is coming and it will come for you. <laughs> it has already come for me. The light betrayed me. And now I call on the dark. I call, and it comes. He comes, my master, with the wind and the snow and the ice and the cold. And he'll enter here, and none can stop him. And he'll take your signs and break you forever. Merriman, the rider. Yes, he's here, outside the house. And I think he's not alone. Come, wolf. Come, hound. Come, hound. Come, holder. I call you in. Hawking has made his choice. He calls on the lords of the dark of his own free will. Come, Ara. Come, Tan. Come, masters. Come, lords. I bring you in. Hawk. Ah, the main hall. Quick. We need it there. We leave the walker and go through to the main hall. It's dark, lit only by candles, and the cold's biting. There are people everywhere, huddled under blankets, and on every face there's a look of fear as the storm wind howls around the house, beating and crashing against its walls. Oh, snow down the chimney. The fire's out. Well, that's all we need. Oh, I ain't oh. never known it as bad as this. No, please, everyone, do try and stay calm. Oh, it's just the storm. It'll pass. I wish we'd never count. Is there anything I can do, ma'am? I'm not sure. The electricity is gone. There's not a pipe. More blankets. That's what we need. Yes. Good idea, Mr. Pettigrew. There may be some more upstairs. I'll go and have a look at Will. Perhaps you can help me. But even as we turn, the walker's there, before us, arms raised, eyes wild, and calling in the dark. to drive me away. I, too, have a flame. This time it burns stronger than yours. He's holding a candle. Its light is deadly cold, biting into me. And as the rider speaks, 
The flame grows and the cold deepens. We have been called and we have come. The cold and the ice. We shall break your circle and it will never be joined and the dark shall rise and consume you forever. And now I can see that we're no longer in the great hall of the manor. We're outside time in the chamber beneath the hill. The lady's sanctuary. She stands at the center of nine unlit candles. Behind her, the fireplace is empty. Her eyes are fixed on the rider, but she says nothing. And you, boy, sign seeker, youngest of all, when the circle breaks, you will break also. Listen, I give you this one last chance. Give me the signs, and we shall leave you unharmed. Come, they're a burden to you. Give them freely, and become as you will. An ordinary boy, untroubled and without care. That can never be, Will. You know that you are an old one bound by the circle and the light. Will you give them to me? No! I will not! Then the cold will break you as it breaks all the others. And the signs will be taken and cast into the dark. Walker! Call an in! Call the lords of the dark! And now I see the walker, far off, like at the wrong end of a telescope. He's standing in the hall of the manor, arms raised as before, and calling. Come, come in you! Come, lords! Come, whoever go! I bring you in! And here in the chamber, Great doors buckle and bend as the dark begins to force its way in. Beneath our feet, the floor begins to crack. And any moment now, I know the doors will burst open and all will be lost. Now, old ones, you will see the dark in all its power. In episode three of The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper, dramatized by David Calcutt, Will was James Wormsley and Merriman Ronald Pickup. The rider was Struan Roger, the walker Geoffrey Banks, Miss Graythorn Mary Wimbush, and Will's family Richard Derrington, Susan Jeffrey, Leo Conville, Susanna Tresillian, and Hilary Attenborough. Other parts were played by Graham Colclough, Catherine Hunt, and Tina Gray. And the music was composed by Martin Alcock. The Dark is Rising is an Armada production, directed by Nigel Bryant. The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper Dramatised in four parts by David Calcutt Episode 4 The Hunting Four signs of light now hang at Will's belt, leaving only two to be discovered. But the dark has brought the freezing cold and snow, sealing off the village in an attempt to prevent him from achieving his quest. Now, as villagers gathered at the manor to shelter from the approaching storm, we discover that the dark has an ally in our very midst. For the walker, long-suffering servant of the light, has betrayed us and calls in the rider. You will see the dark in all its power. In the name of the Circle of Sight, I command you to leave the house, please. <laughs> Your words are hollow. They do not have the force to drive me away. I, too, have a flame. And this time it burns stronger than yours. He's holding a candle. Its light is deadly cold, biting into me. And now I can see that we're no longer in the Great Hall of the Manor. We're outside time, in the chamber beneath the hill. The lady's sanctuary. She stands at the center of nine unlit candles. Her eyes are fixed on the rider, but she says nothing. Walker! Call an in! Call the lords of the dark! And now I see the walker, far off, like at the wrong end of a telescope. He's standing in the hall of the manor. Arms raised as before and calling. Come come here, you! Come, Lord! Come, Huergo! I bring you in! 
and here in the chamber, the great doors buckle and bend as the dark begins to force its way in. I see the lady still staring silent at the rider. And any moment now, I know the doors will burst open and all will be lost. I bring you in. But then, in the hall, I see Gwenny step forward up to the walker. And she shouts at him and raises her hand and hits him hard across the face. Shut up! Shut up! He staggers and falls. And at the same time, the rider staggers as if he's been hit. And he drops the ice candle onto the floor. Their way in is closed. Now, my lady, speak. Drive the dark from this place. What? By the power of the signs, by the power of the circle, by the power of the light that ever burns, I cast you out! It's done. The cold has been broken, the dark driven back. A mortal man called them, and it was a mortal hand that silenced his call. We must find a way sometime of thanking your sister. But now, there is something that must be done. Sign Seeker, take up the flame of winter. By cold magic, the dark called up its power for purposes of destruction. But now we shall take it and turn it to a better use. I reach down and pick up the candle where it fell from the rider's hand. It's no longer cold. And its flame burns warm. Bring it here. Light the circle of candles about me. I walk the ring of nine candles. And as I light the last one, the flames become a fiery circle of burning gold, with the lady shining at its center. So dark turns to light and the flame burns strong, and the circle shall be joined, and all shall be one. And there's nothing now but a circle of flame blazing and spinning faster and brighter. Licht mich hecht geworken. And then it's gone, and the lady steps out of the circle of candles and holds out something shining towards me. The light ordered that I should be made. A circle of gold. Quartered by a cross. The sign of fire. Take it. And she places it in my hands. The fifth sign, created from the power which was seized from the dark, and the more beautiful and potent for that. Let it hang on your belt beside the others, until the last has been found and the six can be joined. But it has not been found yet, and although the dark was driven back, it has not been defeated. The time of its full strength is fast approaching and there is still much danger. But it has lost the power of the winter flame. And that is no bad thing. Listen. Thunder. Thunder and rain. And the breaking of the cold. Thunder. Listen. And rain. This will melt the snow in no time. I do believe the emergency is over, everyone. We're back in the manor hall. Outside, the thunder rolls and the rain drums down. And everyone looks happier. Except for Gwenny. She's sitting on a chair, alone. And she's crying. I feel terrible. Awful. What is it? I hit him, that old tramp. I know, I know. I didn't mean to, but he wouldn't stop. I couldn't stand it. Look, we were all on edge. That's all right. He fell down and I tried to help him up, but he knocked my hand away and a look on his face so full of pain I'll never forget. Where is he now? I don't know. He got up and ran outside and then the thunder came and it starts to rain. I put my hand on her shoulder, but I can't tell her what it is she's done and there's nothing I can do to comfort her. Still railing, then. You've got a real gift, you know, Paul. What's that, then? Stating the obvious. I know. I've been working at it. I hope you two aren't going to start up again. What do you mean, again? They never stop. That's right. Just like this rain. A few days later, at home, outside the snow's melting fast, 
turning roads into mud tracks, fields into quagmires. The day's dark, and we keep the lights turned on. Has anybody seen my bracelet? I took it off when I was doing the washing up. You haven't seen it, have you, Gwenny? Sorry, Monday. Mm. I'm sick of being cooped up. I wish I could go out. Nobody's stopping you. I'll get soaked. Won't make you any wetter than you already are. Paul! I'm sure I put it down here on the table. It'd be worth getting soaked just to get away from For me. For heaven's sake, can't you both just shut up? Oh, oh, God. Oh, now what? The lights have gone out. Oh, there's somebody else who can state the obvious. Must be the fuse box. Oh, I'd better go and take a look. Oh, be careful, Roger. No, don't worry, I will. Oh, I hope you can get it sorted out. You'll never find it in this light. What are you looking for? My bracelet. The one your father gave me for Christmas. You mean the one Mary's wearing? Mary? I, I only wanted to try it on. You took it? Well, why didn't you ask? You were busy. But I'd like it back now, please. Ah! Dad! Oh, oh, Dad. Oh, no! <clears throat> Dad's lying on the floor in the hallway, pale and dazed from an electric shock. Uh, he says he's all right, but... Mum wants to send for the doctor anyway. And as the phone lines are still out, one of us has to go. Mary volunteers. She goes out and we wait for her to come back. But time passes. And she doesn't. I don't know where she can have got to. It's not that far to the doctors. The roads are pretty bad. She'll be here soon. I don't know. And look at the rain out there. And the water rising. I'll go out and look for her. No, you won't. Mum. Well, not on your own at any rate. I'll go with her. Don't worry, Mum. I'm sure we'll find her. We trudge along the track, and the bad feeling inside me grows. And I know that nothing that's happened has been an accident. Because this is Twelfth Night, and the height of the dark's strength and power. So, are you going to tell me what's going on? Going on? Well, something's going on. And if Mary's going off has got something to do with it, I think it's time you told me. I, I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. Look at me, Will. Look me in the eyes and tell me you don't know what I mean. There is something, isn't there? Yes. I knew it. Ever since that time at the church, the storm and that tramp. And you. Me? Sometimes I look at you and you're not like my little brother anymore. Tell me what it is that's happening. I wish I could. Why can't you? you just got to trust me. I know what I'm doing. Yes. I don't know why, but for some reason I think you do. Ah! Ow! Gwenny! Man, look! It attacked me! Did you see it? Yes. Ah! 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 Will! Ah! Get away, Gwenny! Run for home! Oh! Ah! It's not you they're after! Ah! Ah! What about you? Ah! I'll be all right. And I'll find Mary! Go on now! Run! The rooks wheel and swoop around me, but they don't touch me. They dive and sweep down, then turn away as if they're afraid of me, or of something I have. The signs! I undo my belt and hold it up above my head, as I did once before, and a shaft of light bursts outwards, driving them away. We shall have to see about ridding the wood of these birds, I think. Over here now, Will. There's more work to be done yet. It's Martha Dawson. And standing beside her, coat shining with the rain, a white horse. Take her mane in your left hand. Grip it tight. Place your other hand here. That's it. Now. Hop. Uh, steady, girl. Have you ridden before? No. Don't worry. Just keep a hold of her mane and grip tight with your knees. She'll do the rest. She knows where she's going, don't you, girl? Where are we going? To raise the hunt. It's time to rid ourselves of more than rooks. But I'm looking for Mary. All will be well. It's time for the hunter. You'll be needing this. The hunting horn. The one I saw in Dad's shop. The one he gave me as an extra Christmas present. The one that won't make a sound no matter how hard you blow. And the horn will sound and the hunter shall wake. But it doesn't work. Its note will ring clear at the proper time. Go on now. She'll take you. Go with her and raise the hunt. Go! <laughs> and we're away, racing through the rain and the floods. And a sound like thunder grows louder and nearer. And at last, we stop. And we've come to the Thames. 
It's the river like I've never seen it before. Almost a living thing, wild and terrible. Out in the middle, there's an island rising above the swirling torrents of water. The horse springs forward, leaps up through the rain and spray, then comes down and lands easily on the soft earth. There's a twisted hawthorn. Its branches bare except for a single white blossom. And there's Mary, looking up at the blossom, entranced. Where does the music come from? The blossom or the tree? Mary, you have to come away. I want to stay here. It's time to go home. I'm going home. I met Mr. Metoffin on his horse. He said he'd take me home. I rode behind him and he brought me here. Mary, come with me. Leave her. Walker. Walking to you, boy. I'll teach you to show me some respect. I respect no creature of the dark. You will once you give me the sign. I'll never give them to you. You're defeated, old one. I have your sister. And the only way you can have her back is to give us the signs. You... You can't hurt her. She wears my bracelet, boy. The bracelet I sent into your home that gives me power over your family, power over her. And while she wears it, she will do anything I say. Mary. Mr. Metoffin. It's time to go home now. Do I have to? Yes. Here. You can ride my horse yourself. Can I? Thank you. Give me your hand. I'll help you. Don't marry! Shut up, boy. A greater one than you speaks. You see, old one, it's only my voice she hears, only the voice of the dark. And it is a voice that will send her to destruction unless you give up the signs. No. I trust in the light. I won't give them up. Then let the dark and the river take your sister. <laughs> the black horse springs into the air with Mary on its back. Over the river it leaps, then gives a twist, and Mary falls no. down towards the raging water. But then, a bolt of lightning flashes and strikes. The tree bursts into flame, and everything blazes with golden light. I see Mary lifted up by the light, high into the air, and then she's gone. And the rider and the walker and the black horse are gone. And the island splits wide, and out of the depths, a great ship rises. You stood your ground well. And the light has come to your aid. Merriman's there, standing beside the ship. Your sister is safe in Martha Dawson's care. She'll remember nothing except that she was lost in floods and found her way to the farm. Come forward now. It's time to take the last of the signs. Along the sides of the ship, a row of round shields, each shield quartered into a cross. And there, lying at the center of the ship, face covered by a golden helmet, a king. Fifteen hundred years ago, this king fought against the dark when the riders rode freely across the land. Such was his greatness that he drove them from our shores, and for a time he kept the light alive. But only for a time, for the dark returned and he fell beneath it. He was buried in his ship, like the Vikings. Yes. But his death was not in vain, for he has lain here through the ages, waiting to rise again and bring you the weapon that vanquish the dark for all time. And I see, clasped in his hands, a circle of pure crystal, quartered by a cross. At the moment of his burial, this was placed in his hands, his gift to the future last sign, the sign of water. And now that it's been given, he can go at last to his rest. Then another bolt of lightning strikes, 
and the ship itself bursts into flame and begins to sink back into the river. At last he goes to the hall of heroes, born on a sea of fire and light. <laughs> we must lose no more time here. You have the six signs, but they're not yet joined. And if the dark can take them now, they take all they need to rise to power. Look to the north. The rider comes with the lords of the dark. There's only one power now that is equal to theirs. And the time has come to wake it from its sleep. We go to raise the hunter and call up the wild hunt. Do you know where we are? Windsor Great Park. And this mighty oak that stands before us, do you know its name? Hearn's Oak. And tonight is Twelfth Night. When Hearn the Hunter leaves his bed beneath its roots and rides forth to hunt. And tonight, for the first time in a thousand years, he shall have a quarry. Away to the north, a rolling mass of darkness gathers moving towards us. Here, though, the moonlight shines full on the huge oak tree, and a figure stands beneath its sweeping branches. Shall the hunter ride tonight? He shall. Then bring me my steed. In answer to his call, the white horse shakes a mane and trots across to stand beside the figure, and a dark hand with long fingers grasps its neck. There's a swift movement, and the powerful body sits tall astride her back. Shall there be true hunting tonight? There shall. Ah. <laughs> then only one thing remains. Give me my horn, old one, so I may call up my hounds. He comes towards me out of the shadows and leans down from his horse. And as I place the horn in his outstretched hand, I see his face clearly for the first time. The face of a wild thing, part man, part beast, yellow eyes blazing in the darkness, and above them, the antlers of a stag. Tonight, there will be good hunting. And he's gone and we stand alone in the gathering dark. Now all we can do is wait and trust. Look, the dark is upon us. It is finished, old ones. Your time has passed and ours is come. The Lords of the Dark are here! Indeed, it is finished, but not for us, for you! Empty words, old man. On this night I am stronger than you, and I shall have my will. For the Dark, the Dark is rising! And as it rises, so it shall fall. You, boy, would have done better to make a bargain with me while you had the chance. I do not ask for the signs this time. I shall take them. And then I shall destroy you and destroy forever the circle and the light. Look on me now for the last time and despair. The rider closes towards me. And for one terrible moment, I gaze into the true horror of his face. Then his look of triumph changes to rage and despair. As the horn sounds and the hunter rides down from the treetops with a pack of savage hounds teeming and snarling about him. The hunt is on. We have called up a power more ancient than the light or the dark. It is the power of nature in human form, and it knows neither good nor bad, only the wildness of the world and the joy of the hunt and the kill. I see the rider rise into the sky, the darkness gathering about him. For a moment, it holds. Then Hearn and the wild hunt rush upon it, and it bends and twists. Something falls to earth, and the darkness rolls away, 
broken and scattered. And we're alone among the trees. And it's still and quiet. With the full moon shining in a clear sky. Man may outface the wild hunt. Hearn and his hounds will pursue their quarry to the ends of the earth. And there the lords of the dark must skulk and await their next time of chance. But when that time comes, we will be strong. Merriman. Uh, uh, there. On the ground. What is it? The walker. Let me see. <laughs> Help me, please. Is there anything we can do? No. His back is broken. He threw me down. Did you ever think it would be otherwise? For a time, I believed. But those who ride with the dark must expect to fall. <laughs> Don't think too badly of me. I carried the sign for you. You have them all now. Use them well. I will. <laughs> Isn't there anything we can do for him? Uh, Only one thing. Hawking, your journey is at an end. It's time for you to rest. Oh, will you grant me that? Yes. Hawking, liegeman, I give you what you want. I give you your death. Master... He raises his hand, and Merriman takes it, and there's a look of sudden joy on his face. <sighs> then his eyes close, and he sinks back. And then, then there's nothing, only dust on the earth, taken and scattered by the wind. It's over. Now there's left only the joining of the signs. And the lady waits for us. Come forward, Will Stanton. This is a happier meeting than our last. It is, my lady. The circle of the old ones is complete. And your quest is achieved. Bring me the signs. There, in the great chamber beneath the hill, where I first met her, the lady takes the signs from me and places them on the table. Iron, bronze and wood, stone, fire and water. By the circle of light that binds us all together, I command you to be joined. And a shock of power surges through the chamber. Now we have in our possession the second of the four things of power. The grail and the signs are ours. Two more. The sword of crystal and the harp of gold are yet to be achieved. Those are other quests for other times. But once these are added to those, then when the dark comes rising for its final assault on the world, we shall have hope of defeating it forever. When the dark comes rising, Sick shall turn it back. Indeed they shall. But I think you are a little sad to be giving them up. I am. A little. But mostly, I'm just tired. Of course. And you deserve to rest. Go now. Go back to your world and your home. Until we meet again, I shall remember you with pride. Time to go home, Will. Oh, you're still here. Well, of course I'm still here. I told you I have a place in your world. My world? Mm. I'm not sure which world is mine or where I belong. <laughs> you belong in both. And for the present, it's time to return to this one. We stand at the edge of the wood by Huntercombe Lane. It's early morning, dark and cold, and the sun hasn't risen yet. Hey, what's that? Here in the mud. Hmm? The horn. Ah. The hunter has no more need of it and has returned it to you. Keep it with you. You may have need of it at some future time. I'll go now. Right. 
Goodbye, then. Goodbye, Will. For the present. He walks away towards the wood, where two trees rise high above him, like a doorway. The sun's rising. It's a fine morning. And he turns and disappears among the trees as the sky above brightens and bursts into flame and the morning light spreads across the shining land. In the final episode of The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper, dramatized by David Calcutt, Will was James Wormsley and Merriman Ronald Pickup. The rider was Struan Roger, the lady Carolyn Backhouse, the walker Geoffrey Banks, and Will's family Richard Derrington, Susan Jeffrey, Leo Conville, Susanna Tresillian and Hilary Attenborough. Other parts were played by Mary Winbush, Jerry Hinks and Tina Gray, and the music was composed by Martin Alcock. The Dark is Rising is an Armada production directed by Nigel Bryant.